Thank you for staying tuned. Well, it's the final trading day for the week. And just before we cross over to the Nigerian stock market, let's get back to the FMDQ um, marketplace. Plato's Odewe, a fixed income dealer with UBA, of course, is still standing by to talk to us. Good morning, Plato's. If you can hear me, just do a quick wrap up of the fixed income market for this week and um, give us your outlook for next week. And do remember that next week is the MPC meeting. What is the market expecting? Thank you very much for having me. If you look at what played out in the fixed income market this week, it was a very impressive week. Uh, this is because of the fact that the 2021 bond, FGM bond paid coupon of about 45 billion. So most investors reinvested their coupon proceeds and that created a uh, demand for the market and we saw you inch downwards if you look at the, 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 the yield curve. And this is very impressive because in the last couple of weeks, we've seen a very flat fixed income market on the long end. Mm -hmm. However, on the short end, the treasury bills market Events there have been driven by monetary operations of the central bank. You would recall that central bank had uh, continued with its tight monetary operations through the sale of treasury bills at the open market and as well as uh, FS intervention sales at the secondary market. These two major events had impacted the level of activity at the treasury bills market and had also pushed up yield at that window. If you look at the one-year uh, debt, you'll find that it's trading at about 17% yield. And that is a reflection of uh, the, the activities at the, the open market operations and the fact that the central bank wants want short-term interest rates to be very high in order to help in its uh, achievement of monetary policy. So in order to respond to the second question, you, you mentioned that there will be FPC next week. That's correct. We expect the Monetary Policy Committee of the central bank to meet next week. And of course, if you look at the last time rates was raised at that meeting was in 2016, when the economy was in recession. And rates were raised twice in that year because of price stability risk. Um, in 2017 and 2018, we saw stability uh, rates were not raised. Rates were placed at 14% out true. As central bank continued to monitor uh, you know, the impact of the hikes in 2016. Coming into 2019, you observe that um, the price stability risk seems to be on the increase. So my personal take is that I don't think the central bank would would uh, increase policy rates also and also i don't also expect rates to also be lower so i believe the central bank should maintain rates uh, if you look at the inflation inf inflation prints for december we saw an increase of 11.44 percent in december from 11.28 uh, percent in november and that we believe was driven by the increase in food prices and coming into the rest of the year we also believe that inflation is likely to tick up given a number of concerns from expected wage increase and expected increase in food Food prices across the year. So we believe that the central bank would keep policy rates in order to step this expected risk. All right, thank you very much um, for your time today. Well, we'll cross over now to the stock exchange. Well, the, so far, the bulls have taken the upper hands at uh, the equities market. Let's bring in Tempo now to tell us how today's trading has kicked off and, of course, wrap up the week for us. Tempo, good morning once again. So, how has the market opened today's trading session? Well, uh, things are just about to settle down. We are seeing sideways trading at this point in time. Uh, Zenith Bank is, on, is, is, is losing ground, some 1.3% as we speak. And of course, uh, Eternal PLC in the oil and gas segment of the market has also uh, dipped as we speak. And of course, that has now translated to uh, some kind of uh, uh, bearish uh, performance in the oil and gas segment of the market for now as we speak. Because if you look at the key benchmark indices, it's down some 0.09%, which is uh, of course technically marginal in terms of losses but going forward we know that offshore investors are hanging around the corner uh, looking to take position consistently in value stocks and of course that is likely to see the kind that is the kind of sen sentiment that we're likely to have today if you look at the insurance space at this point uh, we still have name insurance on bid we have sovereign trust insurance on bid of course because of the news surrounding these uh, key companies and of course you know that a lot of analysts have Focus that this year, 2019, we should see uh, a few uh, mergers and acquisitions 
or, or capital raising exercises around the insurance space. Don't forget that last year, the National Insurance Commission uh, tried to implement a kind of uh, recapitalization exercise around a lot of the insurance companies, but that didn't work out. So at this point in time, an election year like this, you're going to be having, to, you're going to be seeing a lot of uh, interest uh, from a lot of uh, private equity firms, and of course, mergers and acquisition talks that will play out. Look at NEM Insurance, for example, which bottomed out at one naira seventy-two cobo in its share price is now at two naira, uh, close to two naira uh, thirty cobo, if not more than thirty, if not more than thirty cobo addition as we speak. And of course, that's on account of the uh, latest interest we've seen in the company, AFIG uh, fund, uh, private equity fund. Yesterday uh, took position in it following the exit of uh, 30 of a VFD Group, uh, which had some 30 percent controlling shares in the in name insurance before now. Now that AFG has le has now come in to take that that space, some 29.9 percent, um, it, it offers this private equity firm, uh, which is a domestic company actually uh, controlling shares of about 30 percent technically so, so this is the kind of sentiment we will be saying the right issue for sovereign trust insurance is also uh, uh, coming on board in this first quarter of this uh, year and all of that will be what will be uh, shaping uh, the system so basically we've got offshore investors around domestic investors retail investors are also taking position on a lot of these stocks and they'll take profits in no time before the general elections now sets in and then we'll probably start seeing capital flight again, Chimizu. Well, Temple, hang in there. I know you have quite a lot to tell us. You will tell us more. Give us more update on our lunchtime business program. But for now, we'll wrap up today's edition of the program. And of course, for the week, thank you for watching. I'm Chimizu Obi Iwago.